Hey guys, Mr. Barnes here, and I'm bringing you a pretty important topic, and that's solve an equation with fractions. I call them fractional equations, but um, solving equations with fractions. And this gave us a little bit of a headache when we did it, but I think we got pretty good at it now. So um, this is a video just to fresh our memories for um, before our CRTs, and what we got here is an equation, and we got this pesky little fraction hanging out in front here. So again. We use fraction magic, okay? And that fraction magic is a beauty thing I like to call common, wait for it, denominator, okay? A common denominator. And the beauty of a common denominator is, is that a common denominator, when solving equations, allows us to get rid of every single fraction. Okay, now I know from my own personal experience, fractions are your friends. Okay, but sometimes, man, you just get sick of your friends and you just want them to go away. So this is one of those times when you're sick of your friends. Let's get rid of them. Let's make them disappear. Make them disappear with a common denominator. So in order to get rid of this, even though we only have one fraction here, the common denominator is going to be three. Um, in order to get rid of this three, we multiply both sides by three. So we go. Um, multiply by three, multiply by three. Okay. So one of the th one of the things people forget is to multiply both sides. And the reason you multiply both sides is because if, if you have when we talked about a balance scale, if you have a balance scale, and you put three times more stuff on one side, then it's gonna you know it's gonna lean towards that side. You have to you know put three times as much stuff on the other side. It's like having a, a teeter totter. And you got two kids on each side, and all of a sudden you take two more kids and stick on one side. Of course, it's going to flop down to the ground. You got to balance it out. Okay, you got to make it balance, just like this equation. So what ends up happening is that you get this situation: three times one is three over three. That's just going to be one. This cancels, so you're left with just one. So we don't even need to write it. So we got two x plus three. Nine times three is twenty-seven. Okay, and now you have an equation, a uh, one-step equation to solve. So what we do is we go 2x plus 3, and we want to get rid of this 3 here because remember, our variables and our numbers, they are in disagreements. The, uh, what did we say they were? The something and the socks, I can't remember. The greasers and the socks, yeah, that's right. Minus 3 is equal to 27 minus 3, so we end up with 2x, 3 minus 3, that's 0, that goes away, 27 minus 3 is 24, and now we have an equation that we've got to solve, so we got to get rid of this 2 in front, we're, we're multiplying 2 times x, so to get rid of it, we got to do the inverse operation, so divide by 2, 24 divided by 2, this cancels, let's put x is equal to 12. And that's our answer. Okay? So I hope that's clear to everybody on how to do that. Let's do another example. This one comes from your practice final. So we got another fractional equation. This time is a little bit more complicated. We have 4 over 5 here, out front here. So again, fraction magic. Make them disappear. So I'm going to multiply this side by 5 and I'm going to solve it. Oh, oh, wait. What did I do? I didn't multiply this side by 5. Okay? So what you had to remember is that there's no brackets here. So what we had to do is multiply this entire side by 5. So that's the same thing as multiplying this by 5 and multiplying this by 5. So in fact, what I end up with is these 5 cancels. I'll end up with 4. 2x plus 1 is equal to 5 times 2x plus 1. Okay? A lot of people forget that. They multiply the 2x, but they don't multiply the 1. Okay? That's not correct. You're multiplying the entire side. Entire side, guys. Okay? Alrighty. So we got 8x plus 4. What property is this called? This is called the distribution property. 8x plus 4 is equal to 10x plus 5. And now we got to get the letters and the numbers together. So... I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, so I got 8x plus 4. 
subtract 4 is equal to 10x plus 5, subtract 4, so this goes away, I'm left with 8x is equal to 10x plus 1, and now I gotta take this, oh, this 10x, sorry, I gotta subtract 10x from both sides, so 8x is equal to 10x, subtract 10x plus 1, that cancels, and what did I do? I didn't subtract it from that side, so I gotta make sure I write that. Again, be careful guys, it happens to all of us, even to great ones like myself, of course. So we got 8x subtract 10x, so that's negative 2x is equal to, there's nothing left over here but 1. So now I gotta get rid of this negative 2, so I go negative 2x divided by negative 2 is equal to 1 divided by negative 2. So I'm left with x is equal to negative 1 over 2, which leads us to b. Okay? So again, uh, just be careful as you're doing. I know there's a lot of steps involved, but just be careful. All right, last one. Now this one's tricky. You've got two fractions in this one, okay? So oh, what do I multiply by, sir? Come on by, this is ridiculous. Um, well, you gotta remember common denominator. Well, what's the common denominator of two and four? Well, my CD is equal to four. That's my common denominator. Okay, so I'm going to multiply this entire side by 4, and I'm going to multiply this by 4. Okay, so I end up with 4 outside of 1 over 2, A plus 2 is equal to 4 times 3 over 4, 5 minus A. And now this is just the distribution property. Okay, I multiply both things inside, so I got 4 times 1 over 2, A plus 4 times 2, and for this one, this cancels, I'm left with 3, so 4 times 3 is 12, divided by 4 is 3, so we can just cancel them off, um, 3 times 5 is 15, 3 times a is negative 3a, or subtract 3a, so here I'm left with 4 times 1 half, well, 4 times 1 is 4, divided by 2 is 2, so that's 2a, plus 8 is equal to 15, minus 3a. So I end up with something with no fractions in it. So now what I have to do, I have to get letters on one side and numbers on the other, so I got, I'm going to get rid of this negative 3a here, so I'm going to add 3a to both sides, so 3a plus 8 is equal to 15 minus 3a plus 3a, so you're gonzo. I'm left with 5a on this side, combine my like terms, plus a is equal to 15, subtract 8 from both sides, so 8, subtract 8, 15, subtract 8, so I'm left with um, 5a, 15 subtract 8 is going to be 7, now I divide both sides by 5, I'm left with a is equal to 7 over 5, okay, and that's my final answer. I hope that's really clear to everybody there. Um, again, Take your time, work out all the steps, write as many steps as you possibly can, and find your common denominator. All right, guys, good luck with your studying.